Okay, we were moving right along in that last video. So hopefully we got everything set up right. Let's test it. So if I go into terminal, new terminal window, and I CD into my front end folder, and I run an npm run dev, will this actually do something? I follow the link, and sure enough, we've got our default Vite React set up. Awesome, we can close that. Again, closing doesn't do anything. We need to press Control C, which is inconvenient, by the way. Control C copies, and sometimes you're wanting to copy, and instead you stop your process from running, which I end up doing a lot in, in on the .NET side. So then I'll open up Visual Studio or Writer. I'll come in, I'll go look in, so open a project or a solution, and I'm gonna go find on my desktop our water project and there's a solution file there that I can open. So that'll open up this uh, solution with all of my files there. And how do I get this to run? Now again, typically what we've done is press the play button, right? But uh, as long as we're in the same folder as the csproj file, so let's go in and do this. I'm going to open up, right click on the project, I'm going to say open in terminal, and in here, I can do a dir or a ls, and I can see that there's the CS project file. That's for the individual project. And sometimes we have many different projects that are part of one big software. And so that's why we have that solution file. The solution file handles the overarching solution, all of that stuff together. But this is for an individual project. I can see that CS proj file there. And as long as I'm in that same folder, I can say .NET build, which will go compile the solution, make sure there are no errors and whatnot. So it's going through and doing all that. And then once that's done, I can do a .NET run. Actually, if you do a .NET run, it will do a build first and then run. So I can say .NET run. It runs this app and it says it's hosted on HTTP uh, 5276. Now this is the part I was saying that it's annoying because I want to do a control C. But if I press control C, it's gonna shut the server down. And so I do this all the time. You'll get annoyed at it too, because I just forget. .NET run, it's running again. And then what you can do if you're on the Windows machine is right click and that will copy, or you can click this little copy button and uh, there's something similar in, in Rider um, to be able to copy it. And so I've got this link now, this server is running. So if I come back into my uh, window here and I put in this address localhost I click on it it doesn't find anything well that's annoying well that's because if we go look at it what it's doing is it's setting up that same default weather forecast thing so if I say slash weather forecast then it pulls up the JSON for that weather forecast um, following the link in the controller and so it looks like both of our sides are running well so uh, some people prefer uh, the command line. Now, what's the difference here in .NET between this and pressing play? If I want to have the debugging ability, if I want to be able to put in stops and step through lines of code and hover over variables and whatnot, then, then the .NET run doesn't work. But if I'm just trying to run the server so I can test something in React, then I can just type in here .NET run down in the, the terminal, and that will uh, work for me. Okay, I'll control C to stop that. I think I already did it for the Visual Studio side. And then we just have to decide what to do next. Where do we even start? We have this whole you know, website to build. Where do you even start? And so um, do you start with uh, you know, the views? Do you start with the models? Do you start with the controllers? Where do you start building this app? And really the idea is we could do any of the above. Um, or if we're working on a team and we split it up, we can do all of the above. At the same time, everybody just goes a different direction, starts working on their thing. But I think a pretty logical place for us is to start by uh, working with the data. What data is going to go into this project? So I'm going to open up the .NET side, and I'm going to add a folder in here in the project. Add folder called data. And in there, I'm going to start thinking about what data do I want hooked up now. In our case, you know, what I want to store is, if we look at this website, is there's all these different projects. So that's what we're going to start is looking at these different projects. So each of these little dots and all the projects that are uh, 
held within those dots. And so if we click on an individual dot and look at this, I think, didn't I go this exact same one last time? I'll have to go back and watch the videos. It seems very familiar. Let's pick a different one. I'm trying to get one that's just kind of out somewhere. There are a ton of projects out there. Let's click in here, try and find one that's a little bit different. So in this case, um, well, look at this one, zero being served currently. This is a borehole well and hand pump, but um, monitoring data is unavailable. Uh, in initial installation, March 2010. So something's going on with that one um, that we don't have current data for. So let's try and find a different one. I'm gonna try and find one that's got a different color. So there's a red one here. Click on the full pro project report. This one, well rehab in Kenya, 500 served. It's been in service since March 2014. Um, and so all these kind of have the same, I mean, we're getting different types of wells, which is good that you can see and different impacts and different project phases, but there are different functionality statuses too. Some are being built currently, some are not working for whatever reason. And so this is the data that I'm gonna start uh, with checking. And so what I've done, rather than having you type in a whole bunch of data, is I have given you, I'll, I'll give you a link to a database that you can go download the data. So I've got a database, like I said, I'll provide the link. If you go, I, I've just downloaded it. And I've got this waterproject.sqlite. So I'll copy this and drop it into my project. So I'll come in here and paste this. So it's part of my project. So I have now the water project SQLite. If I double click on this, the reason I'm giving this to you is I didn't really have to type in all this data. I've got a bunch of data input for 25 different uh, projects and that's great. Um, we, we have it in there, um, it's looking good. And we could obviously add a lot more data, but let's just start with this. So the fields I chose to collect just to try and make our lives easy is one, to create a primary key that's an uh, integer uh, for the project ID. Then what's the project name? What's the project type? The regional program, the impact, the phase, and the functionality status. So those are the things we're gonna keep track of for now, and obviously we could add more stuff in later. All right, so I have an existing database. If I have an existing database, how do I connect in the data? Um, and so we just go through the steps that we've done before, and I'll just kind of run through them quickly. We've done this a number of times. We need to have in our app settings.json file an entry for connection strings setting up where is this data located. And so I'm going to make a connection called the water connection, and I'm, that is going to point to a data source just here locally again on my machine equals water project.sqlite pointing to that database. All right, so that's our first step in getting the data in. And um, I think what I'll do just looking at the clock is we'll continue on this process in, in the next video of getting the data into this project and we'll do it all in one shot. So starting in the next video, Spencer out.